So knowledge and innovations, they're a really great thing a society would really want to have. But before really rushing into knowledge, before rushing into innovations, we really need to see a very important catalyst that would be entrenched in every single kid that will evolve to an inventor or a better member for the society. And that catalyst is called curiosity. I believe curiosity is really important. Uh, for me, I would share it uh, as a personal experience. Uh, I would start with my solar car experience. I saw a solar car in front of uh, one of the buildings in Oregon State University and I was like, who built that? And the students there are saying, yep, we did it and we built it, uh, we race it. If you want to help, you can. I was curious, so that's what got me helping them. Uh, with small stuff, uh, sometimes trying to learn how to build a car, trying to learn how to laminate solar cells, until we reach to a very good state of being uh, champions in North America. And that's not enough. Uh, we, run, uh, we won the Formula Sun Grand Prix, and that was a great achievement, but we are still curious. Can we make it better? Can we make a sedan that everyone can afford in five years or whatever time that could make it happen? to reach a sustainable transportation medium. And that's what really got me interested in it. It's a curiosity to build something better and having such a society that really facilitates such thing. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, curiosity is really great even outside the borders of science and technology and really uh, nerdy stuff. It could be related to life experiences and that's what I got in the ALI. In the Adventure Leadership Institute, you would experience lots of stuff. I experienced rafting, rappelling, um, climbing, um, many stuff, and snowshoeing. Some of them, I, most of them, I never did before I came here to Oregon. But after I saw such stuff that will make you more curious, what could I learn? I was like, why not I should learn it? Why not I should experience it? Uh, one of the things was climbing on a telephone pole and then jumping to grab something securely. And uh, my brother, when he saw the pictures, he told me, wow, I thought that you have fear of heights. I told him, yes, I do, and I still do. But that was exciting, seeing how the challenge course would expand your risk-taking until you can really learn something new, you can do something that you never expected to do. That was really exciting for me, and I was curious, can I learn that? And I learned it. And I'm seeing how others are learning it in a group uh, uh, in a group medium. So that being said, it's really important to remember it's not only when you are a grown-up person you would catch on the curiosity fever. Uh, if we could call it a fever, such a fever will start when we are very fragile, when, when, whenever we are children. And that's what happened to me. I remember I was in my first or second grade and my grandfather would be driving his car and uh, basically we stopped on in front of the red light and he would do his magic trick. He would just whew, blow it and it will turn to green. So with, uh, with this blow, it will turn to green immediately. And I was like, how did you do that? And every single time he does it, do it again and he does it. He never explained it to me this magic trick, but eventually it took me 12 years until I figured it out. I went to a science camp where we would build a simulation and we would understand how the traffic lights work and we tried to build a traffic light simulation and I knew that he was looking sideways without me noticing and he would give his blow and it will turn green. So he never got to really see such a fruit of the uh, magic trick because he passed away when I was in my fifth grade and I still remember that day. It was when my father telling me, son, uh, your grandfather just passed away. We were going to the funeral right away in hometown. So we were driving uh, to hometown and I'm looking to the window. It's a normal scenery desert, but there was like these water cooling towers uh, in front of uh, the beach. And basically I would ask him all these questions, uh, why they're so tall, why we need uh, desalination. And he would answer them as usual. He would answer my questions with entertaining uh, questions or with some answers that will open another door, uh, doors. I felt just like uh, Alice in Wonderland. And basically, uh, it helped me to really reach into the encyclopedia, uh, go to the dictionary with his questions. And that's what happened that day. But just remember, he told me after five minutes, son, 
your grandfather just passed away and I really need to pay attention to the road so why don't you hold your questions until another day we can discuss them later and we had moments of silence until we reached home uh, but eventually I got to think with myself about two important things First of them is how cool is water desalination. This is really fascinating technology. I wanted to learn more about it. But more importantly, I was thinking about the mass low hierarchy of needs. Uh, I, now as a hindsight, I was, I'm thinking about it. And he was really taking care of me as a kid. He would feed me, he would get into my needs. But at the same time, despite the agony, he would fulfill my curiosity need. So I would, I would end this up with a short story about how important to really fulfill the needs of our kids. I was driving last spring and in front of the traffic light, I want to give this red light a blow because I know how it works, right? Uh, but I'm looking sideways and these kids come and knock my window asking for money. I was like, no, I'm not going to give you money. I'm sorry, uh, you have to go to school. It's 12 o'clock in the noon and you really have to go to school. They tell me we don't want to go to school. So I asked them where they were in a joyful uh, mode. Uh, I was telling them, well, if you want to be a doctor or engineer, you really have to go to school. Then his eyes got wet and he was telling me, well, if you give me the documents or the authorization to go to school, I would go to school. Man, I was not able to really entertain his questions because I got distracted, it was green light, and I had to go, leaving him with a, a red light in front of his life. Now, thinking about it, every one of us might have a red light in front of their lives, and in front of some of our needs, including curiosity. The real trick that you could really give it a blow, and that's not magic. I'm Sami, and I'm a graduate student in industrial engineering in Oregon State University. This was my gear room session.